All right, what is up tycoons? What's up traders? Super excited for today's video. We're going to give you guys an update on three of the top dividend stocks right now in the market. Um, I know Realty Income, ticker symbol O, and Pepsi, ticker symbol PEP, -E are very popular. But there's a third one that I want you guys to do some research on, which is Stanley, Black, and Decker. Okay, now this one actually looks pretty good to me right now. Of course, none of this video is financial advice. What we're going to do is go over some of the dividends that these stocks are paying and then go over the charts so that way you guys can get a really good update on some of the technical analysis and see really where some of the key levels are that you need to be paying attention to. So make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and we're going to jump straight into it. Now, the first one we're going to start off here is going to be O, all right, ticker symbol O. This is the Realty Income Stock. And what's really nice about this one is that it's a monthly dividend company, right? So meaning they're paying their dividends every single month. So if you're looking to create monthly passive income with dividends, then, um, you know, this is something that you could be interested in right now. All right. Um, they recently uh, just had their ex dividend date on February 28th, and they'll be paying a dividend here shortly. Um, Realty income will. Now, <clears throat> this is the bullish structure that we have on the chart. This is the daily time frame. And a lot of time, what you'll see is that markets like to move in either three wave or five wave structures, right? And so we have a five wave possible structure right here taking us up to some bullish price targets of 73.27 as well as 76.12. Now, bullish price targets are just another term for resistance, okay? Um, so, you know, just kind of think of these as the major resistance levels. But before we can get to these bullish price targets, okay, we have to break through our previous bullish price targets over here, which is 68.92. You can see that there was a very valid resistance level. That was the bullish price targets for our wave three of five. And so now we're starting to pull back and we're going to see if we can, you know, break through and really get that five wave move up to 73.27 or 76.12. Now, you need to be pretty cautious right now. Jerome Powell is speaking twice this week. He's already spoke yesterday uh, and he's speaking again today. And then we've got a lot of inflation data coming out uh, over the next week or two, plus FOMC meeting. So, you know, at the time of this recording, it's a really good time to just start looking at some potential stocks that you want to buy and figuring out what prices you're comfortable getting them at. Uh, I expect things to be pretty volatile over the month of March. So, um, you know, you don't have to buy into any of these right now, but these are just some things you can start to research. OK, now, if you notice here, it says bearish below these levels. And the reason being is that these are our major Fibonacci retracement levels. And the reason you use these is because nothing moves in a straight line down or in a straight line up. Rather, you get a move down retracement continuation lower or a move up retracement con continuation higher. All right. And so you can see that we moved up here. We retraced near our 50% level, and then we continued that trend and hit our bullish price targets. Now, since that moment, we've actually started to retrace. We came down to the 78.6% retracement level, and we're starting to push back up higher. If we would have broken through these levels right here, that's how you can spot a reversal, right? So we talked about using the FIB retracement levels uh, to find trend continuation, but you can also use them to find reversal. So if you move up, retrace, consolidate, and then break through those retracement levels, then most likely you're going to get a reversal and retest some of your previous lows. So <clears throat> that's why we're going to be bearish below 62.80, because that's our last retracement level there. And if we break through there, most likely we're going to come back and retest some of our previous lows at 60 or below. Now, this is the bearish structure, right? So, um, you know, we went over a bullish scenario there. This is a bearish structure right here that we need to be cautious of, especially with um, all of the catalysts coming up. You know, if if the inflation data comes out hot, if the Fed raises base, uh, the rate, the Fed fund rate, you know, at a faster pace than people are expecting and he does 50, then we could see a little bit of pain in the markets. So we do have a head and shoulders trying to form right now. We have a left shoulder already. We have a head. And if we start to bounce here and consolidate in this range in between our major retracement levels of 6280 all the way up to 6593, then that's going to end up putting in a right shoulder. Now we have this trend line here, this white dotted trend line that is going to be the neckline of the head and shoulders. So if we end up consolidating, break below and flip that to resistance from support, okay, we're going to be bearish below there. And most likely we're going to come back down and see this head and shoulders play out and take us to some of our previous lows to about 58 all the way down to 55. 
Um, so you do need to be cautious of that. And we do have something known as bearish divergence. So take a look how we have a high right here. Okay. And then clearly we have a higher high right here, right? So the stock is definitely in an uptrend, right? You can see it's going up making higher highs, but if you take a look on your RSI, you have a high here and a lower high here. Now, remember, the RSI is your relative strength index. So this is going to measure the relative strength of a stock at its given price. So if the price is going up, you should see the relative strength index going up, right? That's generally what you see. Sometimes you see divergences. And in this case, we have a high and a higher high over here, and we have a high and then a lower high. So this is a term known as bearish divergence, and it indicates you could see some type of bearish activity. If you notice, we got the bearish divergence right here, and we did get some bearish activity already. So it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, is this, uh, you know, bearish drop that we've had all just due to this bearish divergence and we're about to start rallying again because we held our major support level or, you know, is this bearish divergence going to help continue to push it lower, break that neckline of our head and shoulders pattern and potentially cause the head and shoulders pattern to play out. So if you look, this is the full data set right here with the bearish structure and the bullish structure. OK, so we are tracking the five wave move to the upside. But if we end up breaking below that 6280, there's a really good chance that we get the head and shoulders to play out due to the bearish divergence. Right. So, you know, if you start to see this thing come up, you want to pay attention on your RSI to this trend line and see if we can break out past the trend line or if it's going to be another um, major resistance level as we've rejected it multiple times in the past, we could end up rejecting it down again. Now, the next one we're going to look at is actually going to be SWK. Now, SWK is... This is basically uh, one that I wanted to throw into you guys as uh, a sleeper play. OK, it's got about a three point nine, two percent dividend yield. Um, this is Stanley Black and Decker. Right. And we can see, you know, we all know their tools. And, you know, while the real estate market is looking rough, home improvement and the home improvement market um, is still is still pretty strong right now. OK. And as we go through a recession, it may it may weaken. But that's something that's really still going to be relevant, right? Homeowners are still going to have to do repairs uh, and they're still going to have to fix things. So one thing I wanted to highlight here, all right, is this is our weekly time frame. This is the weekly chart. This is the COVID crash right here. So if you notice, if we put in this little demand zone here and, uh, at the COVID crash and look at what we've done. We've actually retested the COVID lows here recently on SWK. So, you know, if you initially missed buying the dip here, OK, and you miss this entire run up where right? we've come full circle all the way back down. And this is a good example of a head and shoulders pattern playing out. Right. We have the left shoulder here, the head, the right shoulder. We went over a head and shoulders on the last chart. And this is what it would look like if it plays out. All right. We have the right shoulder potentially trying to form over there um, on on O on realty income. And then this is the neckline. And you see, once we break that neckline, we really get the strong move downwards and complete their head and shoulders. Now, there is something known as an inverse head and shoulders. OK, and it's going to be the exact opposite. And that's what SWK is potentially trying to form right now. We have a left shoulder right here. We have a head and we're putting in a right shoulder right now at this moment. So if we're going to be able to break this neckline, okay, we do have the potential to come up to the 110, maybe even the 120 area on SWK. Now, on top of this inverse head and shoulders pattern forming, we actually have a bullish divergence, right? And so a bullish divergence is going to be obviously the opposite of bearish, but take a look how we have a low here, OK, and then we have this series of lower lows right here. So in this case, the stock is clearly in a downtrend, right? Heading lower. But we can see that we actually get a low here and then we get a series of higher lows right here on our RSI, on the relative strength index. So we're building relative strength, making higher lows as the price of the stock is going lower. This is the term known as bullish divergence. And we have already gotten a nice little decent pop off of it. We're just going to see if this bullish divergence could continue and uh, potentially get this inverse head and shoulders to play out. OK, now, um, remember, it's not financial advice. We're just going over some of the different scenarios just because a chart pattern is forming doesn't mean that it is confirmed yet. But you have to chart it up so that way you can be aware if it does get confirmed and if it ends up playing out. Now, this is the bearish scenario. We're zooming in now and we're on the daily time frame. So we're on a smaller time frame than the weekly chart. And we can see that we actually do have a head and shoulders forming here as well, along with bearish divergence, very similar to O. 
um, on the daily time frame, right? So we have a high here, lower high, we have a high, and then we have a higher high, and then we've already put in the right shoulder here. So if we break below 8102, we're going to be bearish below here, and most likely we're going to retest this demand zone, potentially coming down between 70 to about $76 on STBK if we break below that 8102 level and get this head and shoulders pattern to play out. Now, this is our bullish scenario here. And remember, I talked about three wave or five wave structures. And so we had this period of consolidation over here. And there's three stages to a reversal, right? There's your downtrend. Then you have your box consolidation. And then you have the actual reversal itself with the breakout. So, you know, we had the downtrend heading into this. We started to consolidate, put some box consolidation here. And there is a potential that we could get a reversal to the upside. And if that happens, it would put in this little bit of a three wave structure, right? Where we have the move up, we've retraced to our major Fibonacci retracement levels. We're holding above 8102 and above 8102, we have the potential to hit our bullish price targets here of 102.08 and 107.53. Now, if you notice, I have this gap on the chart, right? It says gap to fill at 114. And that's going to be this big blue box right here. What this is, is this is a gap on the daily chart in between two candlesticks. And these gaps, they typically fill about 90% of the time historically. The big question is when they're going to fill, right? So if it's a gap up, it's going to fill in some type of a bullish cycle um, or a bullish market phase. And if there's a gap down to fill, okay, then that's going to fill in a bearish cycle or a bearish phase. So, you know, this gap could fill sometime soon. It could fill in weeks, months, uh, or it could take years to fill, right? It could take five, 10 years for this gap to fill. But at $84 currently is roughly where we're at right now. Um, and, you know, if you can ride that all the way up to 114 for the gap fill, um, depending on how long it takes, that's going to be a pretty nice return, about a return of $34 on your initial $84 invested. Um, now, this is the overall structure, right? And so we have the fibs plus the price action. And so we have, you know, kind of the bullish and bearish scenario over here. Uh, and I just wanted to visualize for you guys some more really how well the Fibonacci retracement levels work. So if you see here, um, we have this move down if we retrace up to the major Fib levels and then we continue the downtrend. And then we retrace up to the major Fib levels and then we continue the downtrend, retrace, continue the downtrend, retrace, continue the downtrend. And this is what I meant by we had our downtrend here and then we got our box consolidation and we're potentially trying to start the reversal. Now there's no guarantees, we have to pay attention but um, just like we're looking for trend continuation over here using the fibs, we're going to look and see if we can get some upward trend continuation and really start a bullish cycle in the market on SWK. So pay close attention to that. Uh, these are the gaps to fill, right? So we had that gap at 114. As you can see, there's a gap from this candlestick all the way to the very next one. There's a big gap in between here. And I love to chart these up and set some alerts just so that way I'm aware whenever gaps are potentially trying to fill. We also have another really big gap up from this candlestick to the next candlestick. This is a gap to fill up to about 137. All right. Um, and, you know, remember, we do have that bearish divergence. So if you want to look for a bullish move on this, you're going to need to see the RSI break out of this bearish divergence trend line, because um, ultimately, if it comes back up to this area, it's going to be an area of resistance that keeps pushing it down lower. Now, the next one we're going to get into is going to be Pepsi. All right. And Pepsi, we have the bullish structure here on Pepsi. Um, very similar to um, some of the other ones to O, we're looking for a five wave bullish structure right here. We have wave one, two, three, four, five. And if we hit our five wave targets, that's going to put Pepsi at about 187.54 and 193.08. All right, we do have some gaps down to fill. Uh, we have one gap down at 165, but we do have a gap up to fill here that's pretty small up to about 175. So it's going to be really interesting to see where's price action going to be drawn. Is it going to be drawn towards this gap up or towards this gap down right here? Um, that's something that I'm paying attention to. But ultimately, 166.60 is going to be really the line in the sand, right? If we break below that level, most likely we're going to come down and retest some of our previous lows around the 160, potentially even the 155 area. All right, so definitely pay close attention to that. Um, if we go to the next slide, this is going to be the bearish structure and very similar to the, the past two stocks. We can see that, you know, most dividend stocks and a lot of popular dividend stocks are actually putting in a head and shoulders pattern, which is a bearish pattern, right? We have our left shoulder here, our head, our right shoulder, 
and we have bearish divergence, okay? And so notice how we've rejected this trend line once, twice, three, four, five, six times we've rejected this trend line. And it's, and it's been an area where, you know, price and relative strength has dropped lower. But meanwhile, we're putting in these higher highs, right? We have the high, higher high over here and a higher high here. So pay close attention to the bearish divergence. It did cause a pretty big move to the downside. And when we tried to rally here recently, look what happened. We hit that bearish divergence trend line and then we started coming back down. So pay close attention to that. Um, I already mentioned the gap up and the gap down to fill. So, um, you know, you just want to uh, sit on some hands right now. Okay. You don't have to jump into anything right away. Uh, this has been a very difficult market for a lot of people. And, you know, it, it, it tends to trap people, right? When things are really bullish and you start to see things really recover, a lot of times you'll see people buy up here at these areas after missing the initial move. Okay. And what happens is they're not seeing that, oh, hey, well, we're testing a major resistance trend line right here. Maybe this isn't the time, the best time to buy in. Maybe I should wait for a breakout and a retest to see if we can reclaim this area from resistance to support. Um, so, you know, that's some of the things that you guys want to look out for. Okay. And if we take a look, this is the full data set right here. All right. And so we have our bullish price targets to the upside for the five wave structure. But if we break below 170.93 and 166.60, we're going to be bearish below there. And most likely we're going to end up seeing the larger head and shoulders play out along with that bearish divergence. Okay. Now, um, that's going to wrap up today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to see more dividend stocks or you guys want me to break down a particular dividend stock that you're tracking and wondering, you know, what are some of the key levels to pay attention to? Just leave me a comment in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to make a video on it as soon as I can.